Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration. Collaboration can inspire community and communities create social change. I'm David Peck and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Meryl Royce and Tiana Ridley Padmore. We we talk about once again we talk about a whole, whole lot of things, but we're really focusing on on what Tiana and Meryl are referring to as unsung heroes uh, and their new book uh, Trailblazers. You're going to you're going to want to listen in on this interview and you're going to want to get a copy of this book. It it's a children's book, but it's a children's book that's for everyone. And, and, and you're going to, I think, get a better picture for why that's the case as you listen in. Uh, Kickstarter.com, search it, uh, Trailblazers. The, 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 the campaign's been wildly successful. They've done incredibly well. And as they're going to tell you in this interview, the, the more money they raise, the, the, the more access they're going to be able to uh, give to people with regard to, to, to the book and, more importantly, to the messages and the story and the, and, and, and the counter narrative uh, behind this. Uh, we, we talk about universal stories. We talk about racism, period. We talk about systemic racism here in Canada and bias and untold stories. We talk about, you know, race, gender, and, and, and clarity. We talk about the roots and the, and the depth and the breadth of black stories and particularly black stories here in Canada. We talk about empathy and, and arts and, and anti-black racism. Um, we, we, we talk a, a lot about imagery and, and representation in art and, and, and black perspectives and, and similarity through difference, I guess, is a phrase that you've probably been hearing a lot from me lately. And a lot of my interviews, uh, mostly with filmmakers and actors and directors and so on, talking about these issues. What, it, what is it that brings us together? Not, 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 not what is it that separates us. Let's talk about that. Let's try to have a better understanding of that. But, but let's see if we can lean in just a little bit closer and listen. How can we collaborate? How can we cooperate? How can we build greater community? We talk about trailblazers, how each and every one of us has that opportunity. We talk about leaders who step up and step in and and we talk about this notion this beautiful notion of of existence and and perseverance as just being a, 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 a an act of well it's activism it's advocacy but it's but it's trailblazing uh, in action. So, uh, and we talk about this question around what actually is really normal. So you can tell we cover a lot of ground. The frustrating thing for me is we, we barely got rolling and that's just one of those, another one of those great face-to-face -face conversations where, where we, we could have kept going for, for a couple of hours. And I'm sure, um, we're going to be doing a, a part two in the not so dif distant future. And, and one of the things Tiana brings up a couple of times is this notion of codified bias and, and how we have to push back and challenge the narrative. And this idea of counter narrative has been a real theme uh, for me and some of my guests on face to face over the last little while. So check it out, uh, trailblazers, uh, kickstarter.com, listen into the interview, sign up for their newsletter. You can do that. Check the bio for more information. And then for, from my own perspective, don't forget davidpecklive.com. going to see a bit of a shift soon with all of my, my websites coming under one umbrella. Uh, you can find out more about my speaking and, and my writing. You can get a copy of Real Change is Incremental there. I'd, I'd love for you to do that. Uh, face to face live.ca. If you're getting to this interview through iTunes or Spotify or Google Play, one of the usual suspects, don't forget face to face live.ca for over 500 interviews with change makers of all kinds. A lot of filmmakers. TIFF is coming up in the very near future. Excited about that to see what's next. And you can support us on Patreon. Uh, and we'd love that. And if you can't do that, and I get it, uh, please sign up for the newsletter and leave us a, re a review on iTunes. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to get reviews uh, for, for people just to commit. I know it takes a bit of time. We're going to have a contest coming up very soon uh, with respect to, to getting people to sign up for the newsletter and, and leave reviews. It's going to be cool. It's going to be like a free online 
uh, uh, magic show, free live interview, uh, access to to some sort of Zoom uh, chat room with with other filmmakers, etc. So we've got some interesting things we're working on. And uh, don't forget too, you can advertise with us if you're a company out there, if you're an organization, a nonprofit that would like to get out uh, and about. We have several hundred thousand unique visits a month on the website. And we are well over several uh, million uh, listens now here on Face to Face. So, so step in with us, and we'd love that. And uh, don't forget, Rabble.ca is also a place where Face to Face is uh, hosted, and been been with them for years now. News for the rest of us: journalists, podcasters, writers, thinkers, bloggers, people who uh, you need to be interacting with. Uh, Rabble.ca news for the rest of us. But coming right up, uh, talking about um, uh, a counter narrative that, that uh, well, how about just a narrative that matters? Uh, Trailblazers with Tiana Ridley-Padmore and Meryl Royce. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by two very special guests here with us today. We, we always have special guests here on Face to Face, uh, but, but this is a really, it's not even a cool project. It's an amazing project. Uh, Tiana Ridley-Padmore here and Meryl Royce uh, to talk about a new project they've, uh, they're have they in the middle of, right in the middle of, called Trailblazers, uh, the Black Pioneers who have shaped Canada. Tiana, Merrill, thank you for taking the time to join me here on Face to Face today. Thank you for having us, David. Yeah, thank you for having us. So who's so so three way conversation? They can sometimes get they can sometimes get a tiny bit complicated because everyone might want to speak at once, which is amazing. But and please let's do that. But who's going to take the first step in to tell us a little bit about? Uh, well, I got so many questions, but what, what what is Trailblazers? Let's let's just start there. Yeah, we've uh, we're, we've gotten kind of used to knowing the the natural places where uh, where we would step in. So I can nice. I can take the the, 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 the first. cadence. The <laughs> cadence has been already predetermined. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. No, we we flow well together. Um, so yeah. Trailblazers, uh, the Black Pioneers who have shaped Canada, is a children's book that uh, I've been I've been working on for the past three years, and uh, Meryl Royce uh, joined me about two years ago, um, and it essentially features forty Black pioneers throughout Canada's history. Uh, it tells their their undertold stories. Um, it's written in rhyme form, accompanied by by beautiful photos that that Merrill helped with. And um, it, it's essentially a, a book that helps amplify uh, some of the undertold parts of, of Canada's Black history. So this is this is this is a, a, a and it's also a Kickstarter campaign. This is something that you've 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 um, you've been raising money for for the last little while, and you've done incredibly well. Five hundred, I think, five over five hundred and ninety four, just under six hundred backers. You've got a couple weeks to go. You've raised thirty nine thousand dollars. Let's just push people there right now. So folks, check it out. Kickstarter dot com. Trailblazers, uh, the Black Pioneers who have shaped Canada. Can you talk about some of that success, Meryl, Tiana? Um, the time seems to be right, but I think the time might have always been right for a kid's book like this. Either of you want to step in there? Um, yeah, I can speak a little bit uh, from my perspective. I think that uh, it, um, the success shows the importance of the project, the recognition of mm. the importance of the project, as well as the timing. You know, and, for, and like fortunately and unfortunately, um, I think there's a lot of attention on anti-black racism, uh, social uh, injustice, and police violence right now, especially following uh, the death of uh, George Floyd um, in Minneapolis by the hands of uh, police. But um, at the same time, we had been working on this project for two years, and we had, uh, in a way, debated when would the right time to release this book be and how would we release it should it be through publishers or should we do it ourselves and because of the times we're in we felt like there was an opportunity to leverage the moment the conversation and focus the attention on canada for canada to reflect on its own black history and provide something that provides a piece of education for the for 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 Canadians for kids and for everybody really cuz although the book is a children's book it's honestly a learning piece for anybody who gets their hands on it uh because of these undertold stories so i believe it's a combination of just timing and recognition of the importance of what we've been doing you know i just i just had i saw and i'm my my office is now in my my daughter's uh, former bedroom. I've been downsized uh, where where I live, 
and my kids are getting older and it's in this room that you know i read kid stories to my kids you know dr zeus and wonderful wonderful uh, stuff uh, that 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 always has a meaning right there's always something there's always an implicit uh, meaning you pull back a layer there's there's more and yet it's just oh i'm going to read this story cuz i got to get my kid to sleep tonight but what's so beautiful about about trailblazers to me is that like you said Meryl, you know if you get if you get it in your hands it's going to have i think what you essentially said is it's going to have an impact imagine the impact it's having on those reading it uh, those thinking about it and, and and yeah and every book is is read by more than one person right i just there's there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye it seems to me and uh, it's it's a wonderful thing so congrats to both of you like i mean we could do a podcast interview about your success with kickstarter tiana for heaven's sakes like you know how did that happen tell me about grassroots fundraising but i'm more interested in in what you mean by trailblazer mm. Yeah, I really like um, I really like what you what you said there, David. Um, and you know, one of the pieces that we were thinking about is how you know books really are a window into our world, and whether or not uh, consciously or or you know subconsciously, they're also telling us implied messages about whose stories are are important to be mm. to be shared. Um, and so for too long in Canada, these, you know, Black contributions um, and the, the Black pioneers who have shaped Canada, uh, their stories haven't been deemed important enough to, to, to be told, to be incorporated into, you know, our, our curriculums and, and, and to be as widely known as, as uh, the, the civil rights leaders of the United States. And so um, essentially we, uh, so essentially the, the project started as a passion project for me. Um, I went on a, an individual journey of, of intentionally learning and, mm -hmm. and researching about Canada's black history. Um, you know, when I, when I first discovered that, uh, that Matthew DaCosta was actually uh, the first black, black, uh, black person to come to Canada and, and he arrived at the same time as, uh, as Samuel de Champlain, um, I, I felt I felt cheated in many ways, right? Because I, you know, I had learned about Samuel in, in all my courses, but Matthew's name had never come up. Um, and yet he was so integral in, in maintaining peaceful uh, communications between Indigenous folk and, and European uh, colonists. Um, and so as I continued on that journey, I just came across so many incredible names. And honestly, I tried to, um, I tried to have a, a set uh, standardized criteria of you know what constituted a, a trailblazer that 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 would appear in the book. So you know uh, they they had to have an impact that that was Canada wide. Uh, you know past and, and present. Um, I looked uh, from a, an intersectional perspective, making sure that there was good representation across uh, regions, across time periods, different ethnicities, and whatnot. But at the end of the day, um, these are these are human. Uh, these are human stories. Um, and I definitely mm. feel like my my own biases um, as a, as an author and researcher uh, w would also have have dictated uh, you know who, which trailblazers are are featured in this book because honestly there are there are just there are so many that could have been uh, that could have appeared in the book. Well, it seems to me, and Meryl, Meryl, I mean, I'd love to hear what you have to say about this, but it seems to me it's kind of it's one of those things when you start to hear other people's stories. You go. How can we not include you in the book? Like, I mean, this is this is the never. There, there's going to be several volumes, isn't there, Tiana? I mean, this is this is not the end of Trailblazers, is it? I certainly hope not. Um, <laughs> I, I definitely think there's a a lot a lot more uh, to be amplified and a lot more uh, ways that we can expand on this. So we only time will tell. That's right. Yeah. I guess my I guess my point is, and and Meryl, I'd love to hear as an artist what your thoughts on. I mean, everybody has a story. Right. And everyone's story in some way deserves to be told. And I'm not even sure what that really means, but I think there's power in that. And I think the, the way we choose what stories to tell says a great deal about who we are and where we come from. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think Tiana did a, an amazing job in her selection of the Trailblazers. Um, just joining the project was a learning experience for me because um, the, the, the same thing she had mentioned where we're more aware of what goes on in America than in Canada was true when mm -hmm. I jumped on this project. So I had an opportunity to learn the names of multiple trailblazers who had multiple impacts um, in Canada 
from fields uh, such as, you know, medicine, uh, um, the first black mailman, Albert Jackson, um, fields like education, talented people who were actors, who were musicians. And sometimes um, impact was done just by, you know, people standing up to injustices and discrimination like Viola Desmond, who wanted to just simply go see a movie but she was told that she couldn't go in the main um, watching area and she had to go in the um, watching area specifically for black people. And her defiance led to changes um, in her province uh, for discrimination. And this happened bef- before Rosa Parks ever sat down on a bus, mm. but people don't know the timing. Right. They don't know the impact. So, That's great. you know, the, the fact that, Tiana uses the the term "undertold stories" is mm. truly, I find it in, uh, is a genius term because it that's really what it is. It's not that these stories don't exist; it's just that we don't hear about them. And um, through this book, we're hoping to bring them to the same level of recognition as all the uh, amazing trailblazers and uh, people who have influenced Black um, history in America, right? And from an artist's perspective, the other part of it was, how can I ensure that my contribution visually helps people um, recognize the, you know, variation, the beauty in Black culture through something like cartoons? So I really wanted to make sure that I emphasize features that I find are compelling in Black individuals. I really wanted to make sure that I use uh, a variety of skin tones to show the like just the difference in the looks of black people mm. and also just chose colors, facial expressions that I felt were representative of the stories. You know, sometimes children's books focus on having characters that are all smiling, but, right. pl- but black history uh, is not always fun. There's a lot of tragedy in it and it's something that, kids need to be well not need but it's something that kids are introduced to when they learn sometimes how harsh history can be for people of color so sometimes some characters aren't smiling because their fates weren't i guess positive fates like um marie joseph angelique Uh, you learn her story and uh, you learn that she was ultimately burned in front of a crowd for um acts of defiance when in reality, she's a slave and she wants her freedom. So how can she be smiling in in an image uh, when that's her story? So like that's that's how I saw some of it. And I think, well, I think Tiana you know, supported that a little bit. It's, well, I, I think it, it's wonderful. And I've seen a little bit of, uh, I hope I'm allowed to say this, Tiana, but I've seen a little bit of a proof. And I love your illustrations and I love the, 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 the rhyming and the contrast and I guess it's the juxtaposition, uh, right? To hear you talk about it, about how, you know, some of them are smiling, some of them are not. And, and you look at these images and you think, oh yeah, this is a kid's book. But when you start to peel back the layers, the potential for tragedy, the 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 real work, as it were, the history, the, the untold uh, part of the story. Of course, most of us have heard of Champlain, but yeah, Matthew, I haven't heard of DaCosta before. And it's time that I did. And I, I love that juxtaposition with, with the book. T- Tiana, why isn't this book for adults too? I mean, it is in the sense that I guess they're going to be reading it and, 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 and it's going to, where it's going to get on the street. But why did you go after children in a sense? Hope, oh, did we lose you, Tiana? Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, there you are. You're back. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, yes, I definitely think that it's it's for adults as well. I think the the writing style and the stylistic choice was more of, of my own uh, personal preference. So I've right. been writing children's books since, you know, I was two, three years old before I could write myself. Um, so I uh, so I've you know, I've grown up writing children's mm-hmm. books. It's, it's just what what uh, naturally came to me. Um, it's how I naturally uh, found myself uh, framing these stories was was for a younger audience. Um, however, that said, um, I, I think these stories are universal. Uh, I think it's important that they be accessible to, mm-hmm. to a younger generation um, so that, that children uh, can see themselves 
uh, so that children can can understand um, the roots and the, the depth and the breadth of, of Black history. Uh, but, I, but I also see it as, you know, something that, that adults will, will gift to one another. I see it as being a, a coffee table book, a, a book mm. that, you know, millennials uh, enjoy. I, I definitely see it as, as being a universal story. Well, there's something too about uh, and and I hope you both smile because I hope you hear the smile growing in my voice as I say this, but there's something to getting um, human beings when they're young, right? Or getting to them when they're young and, and to tell a richer, fuller story uh, as children, it's just, well, this is how it's always been. I mean, isn't that how the future is going? We hope to change through this kind of storytelling, those that aren't, haven't been represented well. Uh, th those untold stories, whether it's through film, or poetry, or, or classical art, or in this case, a kid's book. Um, if, if, if we start from the ground up, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna see a more hopeful, and I hope and I trust, a more, um, hmm, I want to say meaningful, but a richer, more deeply relational future. I, th does that make sense to either of you? Absolutely. And I think that right now, um, as as adults, you know, as, as adults, we have there's a lot of unlearning that we have to do, a right. lot of unlearning and, and relearning and, and challenging ourselves and our own biases and, and preconceived notions that, that we've been taught and that have been passed down to us. Um, however, I think there's definitely a huge opportunity for this this upcoming generation. And I can I can even see it in, you know, my sister who's who's a bit younger than I am and and you know those those around me that are that are younger, I can see that uh, some of their first uh, experiences with with race and with gender and, and talking about these issues of equity are framed in a completely more progressive and more inclusive context than the education that I would have received. So uh, mm -hmm. definitely looking forward to, to seeing uh, where that goes and, and, and what impact uh, those trailblazers from that generation will be able to have as well. Yeah, it's really, really amazing from a from a whole splash and ripple effect. I mean, this is this is legacy stuff that you were both working on. And it just, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. I, I what how how is the world going to be a different place 100 years from now because of this book? And I it sounds like a crazy idealistic question, but I, I think it's a real uh, human and meaningful one too. Meryl, how do you create, you know, you sounded very detailed as you talked about and nuanced about the images of, of these these trailblazers, these leaders. How do you create empathy through those drawings? Because I think the the few that I've seen, um, they're, they're they're really nuanced, and 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 I think you use the word cartoon. They're they're cartoon like, I suppose. But is it through color? Is it through imagery, symbols, and et cetera? Can can you talk a bit about that? Um, I think. The, the the thing about this book, and uh, I think Tiana and I talked about it a little, uh, be it just one on one, is everything that I've done when it comes to illustration up until now has helped um, transfer the the imagery that I wanted to portray in this book. So, um, let, growing up, um, representation. Um, in animation, cartoons, and stuff like that was something that I found was lacking. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't until I hit my 20s that I started really um, exploring and discovering art from a perspective, the uh, for, from a Black perspective look. And by practicing that, by making careful observations, I was able to capture, you know, um, expression, feeling, sentiment in some of these caricatures yes there are cartoons because um this is ultimately a children's book but it's also a representation of what i feel these people want to um i guess uh, express through their stories you know um reading the rhyme format of everybody's story helps me uh, in terms of how I'm going to portray certain characters. Looking up uh, archival images as well obviously let, lets me know what they look like. But uh, for certain characters, you know, um, uh, some of the poses are more dynamic because um, the type of impact that the trailblazer had was uh, very positive, right? Some um, some educators made big changes in, in people's lives. Uh, some, um, some other... Well, at the same time, other uh, characters, um, due to their professions, you know, 
uh, like uh, Albert Jackson as the mailman and some of the physicians that oh, that are included. When I capture their images, you know, I want to, I, I really want to express that they 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 were that there was pride in the things that mm. there was likely pride in the things that they did so you know and for others there was a lot of you know so, so there was a lot of, of of joy in the things that they did right. so i try to capture these um, emotions and sentiment uh in in characters faces and in the outfits they're wearing and their poses that they're 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 using when applicable so i think people will likely get a sense of that when reading the stories like the the poems um the hope was to make the poems match the images and just through being exposed to art that i believe is um more of from a black perspective it helps put that energy into the book and hopefully it's reflected uh, the reader gets that sense when they flip through the pages as well so, so I'm just going to, by the way, um, I need to get a suit like Albert. Um, that is one <laughs> rich blue, uh, blazer that guy's wearing. That's fantastic. Uh, and I quote Albert, Albert, uh, help me out here, Tiana. If I, if I got the cadence right or not, tell me later. Um, quote, Albert Jackson was born into slavery and his older brothers were sold. So his family fled North to find freedom. No idea what the future would hold. When young Albert had finished his studies, he wanted to carry the mail, and although he was hired to do that, white co-workers caused him to fail. On his first day, they just wouldn't train him simply because he was black. How absurd that the color of skin was a reason to hold someone back. The press quickly picked up the story and public opinion divided. While some thought he shouldn't deliver, others remained undecided. But Albert refused to accept this, and his peers organized their support. They demanded investigation. The prime minister got a report. One sound letter was published widely. A decision was finally made. Albert Jackson became a mail carrier. And for 36 years, he stayed. That's Albert's story kind of in a nutshell. How did, how did that sound, Tiana? Did I, did I do the, the poem well? Yeah. Are you did available for an audiobook recording? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'll have you uh, contact my agent right after our <laughs> interview today. Yeah, absolutely. I love that kind of poetry. I grew up with this man by the name of Kurt Bork, who was a dear friend of the family. And he would have these, these types of poems with a, a story, a narrative to it, you know, that, I mean, you've told a really rich uh, story here in in what six stanzas is that right i mean that's remarkable so a well done um beautiful stuff again I, I i love what you guys have pulled off here in the context of this rhyme this poem tiana you touch on some pretty pretty serious issues can you and you and you talk a little bit about it in the introduction but can you tell me a bit more about that Oh, I don't know that um that hard to see kind of racism. You know, we mm -hmm. had a politician or two recently who talked about the fact that oh, we don't have systemic racism here mm -hmm. in Canada. You know, how how absurd. I mean, that ideological edge to that that pernicious edge that just kind of gets in in a variety of ways that often we can't even see. Mhm. Mm I think that's been a one of the the common themes in a in a Canadian context, and you know, this past weekend, actually on August first, was uh, Emancipation Day in Canada. So it was the day that slavery was abolished in Canada, August first, eighteen thirty four. Uh, you know, over over a million uh, enslaved Black and Indigenous people were were set free, um, and that essentially shaped the 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 how Canada would move forward. That's what encouraged. Uh, so many, uh, you know, freedom seekers from the United States who then set their set their sights on Canada to 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 come uh, to come here, and and that's uh, essentially the moment when as uh, when racism in Canada became more uh, increasingly difficult to to identify. Right, it's when uh, racism mm. was no longer uh, uh, blatant, but instead it was codified into into our institutions and into our systems and. And and uh, you know sprinkled with with the, you know the old Canadian politeness as well, um, and so that uh, from from the perspective of a Black Canadian, I found that incredibly difficult growing up, um, you know not knowing uh, when I when I was experiencing oppression and knowing when I was being discriminated against, but not exactly being able to to articulate or or put my finger on it. And, and right. I think throughout throughout Canada's history, we've seen 
uh, that happen in different waves. So we've seen the ways in which uh, racism has has taken different shape and 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 different um and and different forms and manifested itself in different ways. Uh, so in the case of Albert Jackson, uh, you know that was uh, raped during the the height or near the end of of segregation in Canada, where um, it was it, it you know it was legal to 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 discriminate and to not hire. Uh, certain folks for for different pro- professions. We saw um, in the case of Bernice Redman, who's another trailblazer featured in the book. Uh, she was born in Toronto. She wanted to become a nurse, uh, but at nursing schools in Canada wouldn't accept black folk. And and uh, the reason behind that was because uh, they didn't see uh, black women as being feminine and pure enough uh, for the role. And so uh, Bernice actually went to the United States where uh, they were accepting uh, Black uh, admissions to to nursing school. And she got her degree there and she came back to Canada and became Canada's first Black nurse. Um, So we've seen all throughout history the ways in which uh, different trailblazers have been able to to identify uh, the ways in which racism has has taken a new form um, and challenge it. And I think that's really what the book is about. It's it's about the the people who have who have led the way and and who have been able to uh, to identify Canada's more more subtle and, and codified racism. I'd I'd love to hear uh, from either of you about that leading the way. And again, we're talking about trailblazing and so on. Sometimes, uh, you know, I've been, I've been my listeners know that I've been you know working in international development for for many many years, and and always blown away by those change makers, those those folks that start an organization that 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 design a a fifteen dollar light that can be used anywhere in the world because it's solar powered, and they have they come up with the idea that it can also power your cell phone, and you know just wonderful marvelous stuff. Why either of you? I'd love to hear this, and I ask this question a lot, and I don't really have an answer for it. But why them and not someone else? What is it about this notion? What is it about Rosa Parks? What is it about uh, Matthew that 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 allowed them to step into this idea? Not just this idea, but step into trailblazing and and telling a new story. Where did that where did that kind of courage come from? I think Big question. Yeah, no, it's a huge question and I don't think that there's um I don't think that there's a, a one size answer either, right? I think that each person is the whole of their their experiences, their values, their beliefs, um and also the the resources that they have available to them. And so um you know, I I think uh each person in our our book certainly had had very while, you know, while they existed in a a similar uh uh, system, uh, they had very uh, different experiences that 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 led them to to become trailblazers. And in some contexts, they didn't even realize that that they were trailblazing, right? So in some contexts, their mere existence was was trailblazing. So Portia Portia May White, who was uh, Canada's first uh, internationally known concert singer, she just loved to sing. And uh, but she loved to sing in a context where uh, where, you know, uh, where black women uh, and black people weren't uh, allowed into into certain um, uh, performance theaters and weren't allowed uh, in, 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 in certain restaurants. And so uh, the mere her mere existence was trailblazing and, and her perseverance in that sense. And so um, this book is is aimed at children. And what we really want to encourage uh, is that there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, and each and every one of us has in us the capacity to become a trailblazer. And it's a, it's a matter of, of um, leveraging our strengths, of identifying the gaps, and, and of, uh, as you said, David, you know, being brave enough to, to take that step and, and to blaze the trail. Meryl, Meryl, do you consider yourself a trailblazer? Um, you know, kind of like what Tiana said, uh, if, if, if what we're doing is trailblazing, then uh, I won't know for a while, right? <laughs> right. Uh, well, I love this. I, I love this idea, Tiana, too. Meryl, tell tell me more. But I love this idea of existence yeah. and perseverance as trailblazing. That is an, a deeply profound and and makes so much sense. I, I think um, you know, for for every trailblazer that's in this book. Um, there to the question that you asked David earlier about why someone why uh, Matthew DeCosta or why uh, Rosa Parks I think for every trailblazer in the book there are a large number of people who have done the same things but it didn't take notice Mm -hmm. and um, I think that's important to note because um, 
just the way um, black people experience and live, it, 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 uh, it, it sometimes it needs to be more normalized. Just uh, I don't know exactly how to express what I'm trying to say, but when we do notice someone trailblazing, we also have to remember that that experience is not unique and it's not you know something that that one person experienced alone. It's likely that many people have had the same difficulties. But because that one person was uh, noticed, now it sheds light on more, many people's experiences. Um, I think that kind of thinking also can be re- like it can be seen in what we just experienced in May when uh, George Floyd passed. Mm-hmm. I think there was a lot of energy, uh, a lot of uh, similar sentiments from people that really felt that his experience wasn't unique alone and the voices of the unheard were suddenly heard. So I think, I think um, that's an important thing to note when we're talking about trailblazing. It's not a, a single person thing. It's just um, a singular moment. That's a reflection of a lot of people's experiences. And um, in terms of what Tiana and I are doing, uh, I, I don't think we are the only ones who have ever done something like this, but we're, we're, we're getting, uh, support and recognition for what we're doing and we're hoping that at least I'm hoping that what we do will encourage others to do something similar and in a sense that's my view of trailblazing right it's setting a path for others to follow that is in a visible light so that people don't have to feel like they're walking alone or in the dark when it comes to the things that they want to do because they are of a certain skin complexion or their way of living life and experiencing things uh, is different from what is considered a majority um, or in quotations, what's considered normal. Right. So um, yeah, I I think, I think what, what we're, we're doing now has its importance in time and we'll see down the line how impactful it is. And it's also just to remember that uh, everyone that came before us was representing uh, uh, a vast number of people in their communities and people who look like them at the same time. I think that's really important, Mel Royce, because this book, we, you know, you, we, even whether or not you call us trailblazers for for writing this book, I think it's important to recognize that this book would have never been written if not for the many many people have come before us uh you know right canadian black canadian writers like afua cooper and dion brand and desmond cole and and uh, robin maynard and and um and and natasha henry uh natasha henry who has actually uh, uh, agreed to help review um this book before going out actually um if not for their works personally, I would have never have been awakened uh, to the experience of, of Black Canada. I would have continued uh, to, to, you know, to, to believe um, the narrative of, of Canada as this, you know, as, as uh, this uh, promised land. Um, and so I think it's, I, yeah, I think that collective element is is so important that, yes, we're highlighting um, 40 trailblazers, but honestly, it's it's been a collective, a collective movement. You know, it's interesting. It's interesting you say that that it, this is it's forty plus. Like I think that was my whether or not you guys go on to do another volume or or someone else picks it up and creates an animated series around it or who knows what could come out of this. I think the point I was trying to make is that there's just there's so many trailblazers. There's so many stories to to celebrate. I'm I'm uh, uh, making a, a film uh, currently and coming near to the end of it. And what I've learned uh, as, as a, as now a, a documentarian, I guess you could, you could kind of parachute anywhere into a community in the world with a camera and, 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 and find a really incredible writ story to tell. And I think there's something really amazing and remarkable about that. And I love how you guys are celebrating, uh, some of those, some of those stories. And, and like you said, awaken to black Canada, Tina, I'd love, I love that phrase, existence, you know, as trailblazing. Um, who, who said it? Kierkegaard said, you know, you understand living forward. Uh, sorry, you live living forward. You understand looking back. Albert Jackson Jackson was a nuisance, right, in mm-hmm. his day. And we now look back and we go, no, no, this guy made a huge difference. Look at, look at, look at how things have changed. Rosa Parks was seen as, a, I guess, a, a, a criminal, right? And yet, Look at the difference, the impact, the the waves, and I and I the 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 timing of of John Lewis's funeral uh, in the U.S. 
is is not lost either here on me. I was just reading about Obama's uh, eulogy, and I don't know if you guys have read it yet, but it's it's absolute and a bit of a shout out. It's worth reading, folks. Check it out. Talk about trailblazers and and looking for those you know those dots uh, to connect. So so lots to celebrate. How do we keep pushing this narrative forward? Obviously through books like Trailblazers and, and, and new films that are coming out like Stateless, for instance, coming out very soon in Canada. Can you guys talk a little bit about that? And I, I can't believe we're coming to the end of our interview, by the way. This, yeah. <laughs> we've barely got started. Come on, what's going on? But but yeah, how, how else can we just keep this? You know, we had that surge of, of of social media and people were talking about it and there were articles being written and so on things have quietened down for sure how do we keep it present how do we keep it in people's faces yeah i think the same way that um you know this interview seems like uh, we're just getting started i think so uh the same can be said about the this conversation around black canada mm-hmm. and systemic racism in black canada um, you know, there there was uh, a, a poll that was done from Ipsos in, in December it said that 49 percent of Canadians didn't believe that race and racism was a was a serious problem in the country. And I think that if we were to um, to repoll those people today, following the conversations that have been taking place over the past few weeks, I think some of those those perceptions would be shifted. Um, and uh, and that's a, a huge part to the work that's being done uh, across sectors. Um, to really shed light on and address systemic racism in the country. And so, you know, I see this this book as being one very small piece to a much larger, a much larger picture. Um, I think, uh, you know, we need to start targeting and talking about uh, curriculum, right? And Black History Month is, is Canadian, uh, Black History is Canadian uh, history. It isn't just, uh, it shouldn't just be reserved for Black History Month. Um, that should be incorporated into, into our, our classrooms throughout the year. Um, I think when we, we talk about uh, conversations about about racism. Um, you know, we need to challenge the narrative of of Canada as being a multicultural haven, and really recognize that although our racism doesn't look the same as it does in the United States, um, it, it it's still very much here, and it it has very much real consequences uh, uh, for Black, uh, Indigenous, and people of color in the country. And and I think that when we think about um, <laughs> virtually everything uh, that that we take uh, that we that we understand to be as as fact, we recognize that there have been biases that have been codified into how that information has been prepared, how that information has been disseminated, um, and challenge the the you know the narrative that uh, that um, that Black Canadians haven't been here because you know Black labor helped helped uh, build Canada's economy, Black contributions helped spearhead our, our innovation and and ultimately black determination and resilience is what helped Canada become uh, the the you know so, such an inclusive uh, country and, and diverse country today so um yeah I, I hope to that we continue these these conversations uh, even when black lives matter is no longer trending on Twitter right right yeah point point taken it's not a trend. It's 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 the way forward. It, it absolutely. It's well, how come I hadn't heard about Matthew before? Sure, right. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's hear about Champlain, of course. Let's hear the real work on Champlain, but let's let's talk about Matthew uh, at the same time as well. And I I, I think that's uh, I mean that's even even that alone it seems to me is an incredible sort of uh, outcome impact uh, of of what you guys are doing here here with Trailblazers. Uh, can, can, can we just talk about, about the campaign as we, as we wrap up? And I'm so sorry. I mean, maybe we, we, we're going to need to do part two when, when the book is released, which I think, Tiana, help me out here, coming in up late October 2020. Um, folks, head to kickstarter.com. Uh, Trailblazers, the Black Pioneers who have shaped Canada. There, there's some goodies there for people, isn't there, Tiana? Could, could hey, you know what? Could we give away some free copies of the book? Is that, is, we didn't talk about that. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that's a possibility. Anyway, tell tell us more about how people can sign up and step in. Uh, yeah, so we, the Kickstarter campaign right now is up. Um, it's been up since uh, uh, July 15th, and it's up until August 24th. Uh, we had an initial goal of $10,000 for this campaign just to get the project off the floor. And uh, now we are almost at $40,000. Um, wow. This 40, 000, the, anything above $40,000 will help us, A, get the book translated to French so we can access our uh, francophone community. Um, 
and then secondly, it will help us um, reach uh, more schools, um, more community uh, programs, and um, uh, low-income households and lower-funded uh, individuals. Or we hope to price it at a uh, at a point that's very accessible uh, for people. Um, so every dollar will go towards that contribution. Um, the uh, we hope to publish in mid October. We're working very dil- diligently to make sure that we reach that date. People can also sign up, uh, leave their emails on uh, uh, blacktrailblazers.ca to get updates once the book is published. And uh, yeah, there are rewards for the Kickstarters, uh, incentives. Uh, any $50 or plus contribution will get you a copy of the book. If you pledge at our highest uh, contribution of $300, not only will you get a copy of the book, some stickers, a, an exclusive coloring book, but you'll also have a chance to have a custom poem and piece of artwork done by myself and Tiana. And oh, that's uh, very cool. You'll also get to have your name added to our website as a as a contributor. So, um, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, of incentives for people to contribute. And uh, honestly, the sky's the limit right now with uh, what right. we hope to do with this book. The more funding we get, the more chances that we'll have of making sure that this becomes a part of you know, uh, Canadian education. This becomes uh, normalized for people. And then every household hopefully will have a copy of this book at some point you know, to help, um, to help uh, tell Canada's uh, undertold Black history. It's amazing, guys. Well, so uh, congratulations. So well done. Um, um, well, you got one more supporter, so I'm heading to Kickstarter right right after our call, and I'm going to encourage uh, my listeners to do the same. And and thanks for your time today. I mean, I'm, I really am looking forward to seeing a copy of the book. And, and first thing I always do, you're a bookworm, I think, Tian. I think it says that on the site, actually. But but first thing I do is I smell a book because <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, maybe I'm just making a fool of myself here, but I love I love the the, the feel, like the, the printing, the colors. It's it's just it's it's wonderful. So thank you for your time. I hope um, more people sign up and step in. And uh, like I said, it's it's been a real 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 pleasure chatting with you both and getting to know you both a little more and, and hearing more about Trailblazers. So uh, we've been we've been talking with uh, Meryl Royce and Tiana Ridley Padmore today about about their new and important uh, project, an important book called Trailblazers. The Black Pioneers Who Have Shaped Canada. Thanks to you both for joining me on Face to Face. Thanks, David. Thanks for having us.